Hi. So if you ever heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. I actually just switched over from SoundCloud to Anchor because it's free. Yes, free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. So if you're not an audio editor, that's cool. Anchor has you covered. They'll also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms that podcasts are heard. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listeners. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So if you haven't already, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Oh, yeah, I see you, girl. Episode eight. This is Black and Nuance Podcast, where we dispel the ideas that all black people are monoliths because we're not. We bring our varying perspectives to pop culture, relationships, and things we go through that we can't always name. Welcome to Black and Nuance. Welcome to Black and Nuance. My name is Georgia. And I'm Rob O. Snap. Oh, uh, yeah. Snap, so I just wanted to quickly mention this because you found the story about it. Um, so I told you I went to, to Dallas last last episode. Um, but I ended up, uh, so when I was on the plane to, to, uh, back from Dallas, I decided to watch Superfly, right? I had worked with Director X before at the TV network I used to work for in New York. Super dope. And of course, because Drake has raved about him, I was just like, Director X, oh my gosh, like this is dope. Like, is his, you know, I think this was his first film. So I was like, let me watch Superfly. And then Trevor Jackson is in the show, Grownish, and I really wanted him to get with Yara Shahidi's character. Nonetheless, he plays Priest in Superfly. And that movie was surprisingly really good, but you have found out some news about one of the characters, and it happened to be a character I actually couldn't stand in the movie. If you saw it, he, he's, um, he was the one that was jealous of priests and the money he was making he was part of the snow patrol where they dressed in all white and looked corny as fuck okay so what's the story that you found like the quick mention about the story that you found well police say kalan walker was charged with a few accounts of assault against women i think it was like nine different women what happened was they what were type saying, of assault though uh sexual assault mm-hmm. sexual you gotta you gotta name it because assault sexual is assault. there's All- different there's allegedly different yes they say allegedly yes sexual assault? well he says police say walker would reach out to women seeking modeling work on social media under the guise of wanting to hire them then he would lure them in to get them um you know in the bed with them he would rape them and the thing is how old is he 23 you are in movies you're acting I just, I can't understand. And we're not getting into the whole thing about this, but I just wanted to mention that because it was just so funny how I was just talking to you, how I saw Superfly and I liked it. Yeah, there could be and... all kinds of twists to that. There mm. could be, you know, once you start involving alcohol and drug use. Yeah, and... but I mean, the story that, you know, the picture that could easily be painted is, you know. Well, the picture's painted. You see I mean, the picture's painted, right. So yeah. what I was going to say was the fact that men, the men that feel like they are entitled to a woman's body, I definitely take issue with that. This He's not ugly. Way. Like, come on, my man. Really? Doing too much. Absolutely too fucking much. That shit blows me. And that's not even the main topic of this episode. So, Superfly is good. Besides that alleged report about him, uh, Superfly is actually a good movie. So, watch it. If you can, if you haven't seen it yet. So, what's that? Um, so, going into all of the things, this is the, 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 the podcast. I mean, this is the segment where we just talk about something personal that happened in our day, our week, anything that... We want to get off our chest, heavy or lighthearted. So this has been something on my mind. And Snap, we had offline about this last week when we recorded. And this is also a a conversation I would have with my friend when I was out of town. And we just talk about this often. Self-care routines, right? So what are... What do you do to take care of yourself emotionally, mentally, physically? When you're going through something you can't name, what's your outlet? Is it healthy? Is it self-destructive? And it made me think about some of the conversations that you, 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 you shared on air It made me think about when I'm going through something, Snap, I'm like, man, what do I do? I go to writing, right? I write on my blog. I'll listen to music. Sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, I'll drink wine just as a nightcap. But some people take it over the the edge, right? Depending on what you're going through. If it's something like really heavy in your relationship or you're depressed, you may gain weight. So you might start eating more. You might start drinking more. You might start doing physical activities, like whether it's having a lot of sex, but like unprotected sex. Like, so now you're not taking care of yourself. And and I thought it was very important to kind of talk about it because I feel like I see... I don't want to say, say like there's someone in my, in my life that's spiraling out of control, but I feel like they I don't think they have any self-care routines in place. And I think it's um, they're not aware of how things manifest. Right. Um, but for you, Snap, just asking you. And this is also kind of connecting the dots. Right. When I was talking to you about, you know, you have a, um, a funky relationship with your mother because of whatever reasons. Right. 
Um, and I was just like, well, snap, how would you be or what, what kind of person would you be today if and confidence was instilled in you or you were told that you could do this or you had outlets to express yourself emotionally? And then fast forward to, so there's a two-part question. So that's the first part, Snap. You want to answer that or you want me to go to the second part? No, you can go to the second part. And the second part is now, like this present day, what does Snap do to really um, take care of himself when you're going through things that you can't necessarily share with your your lady or close friends? How do you get it out? Because remember, when you keep stuff like that in, you end up exploding or it comes out in a different way that you may not have control of. Well... Part one, um, when you talk about instilling confidence at a young age, it's very powerful. It's very strong um, because, again, it creates a vibe and life uh, that you can do. It's one thing to tell somebody you can do anything in life and don't show them how to do anything in life or don't. Um, that you can do anything in life just becomes a phrase, like a just say no to drugs kind of shit. Um so I can't say that I've always had that. You know, there were moments and times where I think I would get a pat on the back, but for the most part, no, nah, I can't remember any. Where thing. you didn't have any outlets where you could really express yourself. Like if your mom saw you crying or you were cry- like, what were you told at a young age that you couldn't express yourself emotionally? Like you couldn't emote as a young boy or a man. No, nah, not really, but we. I just, I don't know. Like, I you mean, I, for the somewhere. most part, I cried when I got beaten and shit, but for the most part... Um, but when your like, heart was broken, like, w- did you observe things that told you that you shouldn't be doing this? That you couldn't express yourself the way you really want to? Um, subconsciously, even subconsciously speaking. Yeah, I would think maybe backlash, because again, you know, there were times where I, I'm going to just downright say I was just the fear of my mom. The, you know, I was just scared of her. You know, like we we tell stories. Comedians always tell stories about black moms and and how they'll make a joke like white kids could get away with this shit, but yo, I saw the look on my mom's face and and that's some real shit. Like you take that into life with you. Um, so there were a lot of things in life that I wanted to do or maybe that I could have done, but I kind of questioned myself. So before I even made an attempt to even do it, I kind of shot it down or was like maybe I should do this or. Maybe there was just times where I would think, damn, maybe I think I need some money or something like that. And I can't go ask her for this. I ain't doing none of that, you know. But again, because of that, um, a lot of the things, the way I live today, I second guess them in, in my own personal. Like, can I be way further in life? I don't know. To each his own. Some people just have a natural drive to just want to make all the money in the world. Some people just want to be comfortable. Um, I, in my growing up experiences and through life, I just want to get through life drama free. So that means the person that I'm with, I'm not going to be arguing with you. We're not going to ever really argue. That's not what we're going to do. Um, Because I don't really surround myself around that. Friends, negative friends, I try not to surround myself around that either. Um, But how would that have transformed me today as a person? Um, Hmm. I'm I'm very I'm very uh, let's see if there's a here you go this is how I feel in life now um, some people are seen as go getters but I feel that let's say I'm working at a location blah 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 and you feel oh there's another job position that's higher than blah 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 I feel that if you think I'm qualified for the job you should come ask me for the job I shouldn't have to apply for it so you know that's not. I'm not going to say that's not a thing, Snap, but you know if you want something. You're supposed to go get it? You're supposed to go after it. And so I, I don't I don't think it's lazy because I'm not No, I wasn't going to call it lazy, but it's almost like taking a submissive approach to, the, to your goals. And that's my life. Goals. That's life. That's life mm. with me now. And literally being submissive kind of fucked me up in one of my relationships because, again, it was just like, damn. Maybe she didn't think I was man enough and has nothing to do with like, you know, nothing like, I don't know what it is. It's like, okay, here you go. Let me give you a great example. Uh, what do you want to eat? Whatever you cooking. Well, um, what you think we should do? What you want to do? 
blah blah blah. So so we would get into arguments because it's like, yo, I'm trying to ask you something so that you can tell me what we and I'm like so nonchalant about it about life nowadays to where I don't care. It's, it's but you understand how that could be frustrating though, right? But that's who I am today. As and but that's I think again growing. I took I took on such a I don't care role in life early and I just traveled that with me and and again that's why I know in relationships when I had early relationships after a certain point I knew that th- I didn't know how to grow through a relationship after a certain like we hit that one two year mark I was like all right well what's next like because I didn't know how to get past I didn't know how to grow in anything like that so even that the way I treat women the the but all of that has taken a toll, has taken its role on me in life. And, you know, again, place and judgment, things like that. So, sh- I don't know. Could I be a, a owner of a bank? Could I be the, the CEO of a clothing Remember how you, about, we like talked that? about you playing basketball and you just you didn't allow yourself to go as far as you could have gone because of something? Yeah, a lot. Um, again... The only reason why I started playing ball was to remove myself from the house situation. So, like, all the bullshit that was going on. Let me tell you what was going on in my house. Here you go. So, I am living in a two-family house with a basement addition. At one point, I'm living on the top floor. My mom is staying on the middle floor. My daughter's, my oldest daughter's mother is staying in the basement with her new man kind of shit. Oh. And I was like, wait a minute. Who does shit like this? But not only that, this woman, okay, so I know she having sex in my house because <laughs> it's only a matter of time where she's actually carrying an additional baby. So now she had my baby for me, and now she's living in my house with dude. Oh, oh my God. That shit still to this day fucks me up. But it's like, and this is how I'm supposed to live. You know, it was like I had to. So mentally, I had to kind of remove things or kind of see things a different way. But who the fuck does that? Who, who Whose mother moves in your baby mama and then her man and it's cool. So what did you do about it? That's what I'm saying. So you just took the submissive approach and just di- you didn't move out. You didn't you didn't say anything. This you is didn't... one of the reasons why I'm in Florida today. Like literally one day I just <laughs> got up and moved. Like I've been running from this like my whole life kind of sort of. So, so now to part two then, speaking of the word running. So what's your resolve now for your self-care? Because uh, there seems like there's a lot of things that still fuck you up, Snap. I stay away. I don't reach out to so nobody. You, so avoidance. I avoid Every and anything I can. That's not necessarily healthy, though. You know that, right, Snap? But it works for it you. It works for me. Right. And, and you know, maybe I do need some counseling. Maybe I should go see something like that. But um, I know what's wrong with me, and I know there's some things that I got to get out. I know there's some things. They say you feel better when you talk about it, but there's nothing really to talk about it. Mentally, I talked about this foolishness in my head for years. In and, your head. Yeah, yeah, in my head. That's the difference. Because sometimes I feel like you need to have you need to hear the perspective of somebody else. One that's licensed, two that can actually help you name it, like walk through it and tell you like this is some some things that you can do. But what do you do? Okay, so we know you avoid what what but what? So you don't really have a self care routine like that's your big your biggest thing is just avoid avoid avoid. Do you do anything else that help you get through things that you just sometimes don't want to think about or deal with? Yeah, um, as a as a grown ass man, I'll pick up the video you game. game I know. <laughs> like that's what I do You'll now. Put, you let your frustrations yeah, and stuff it's, out. It's a quick getaway, but at the end of the day, I could say like this: Look, and even with my woman nowadays, I'm like, um, you want me to go in this room and play, or can I stay in this room and play? And then depending on if she want to hang out and just stay downstairs, then she can just stay in that room with me. But after a while, she get tired of me playing video games and shit, so she'll go because you're not paying attention to her, right? But in your mind, you're like, I need this right now. Right. Do you express that to her ever? You just don't no. really say anything. Mm. No. And that, I mean, I've gotten a lot better with communication, but communication could be so much better on my end. Mm-hmm. And so I know I'm still dealing with that. I'm still facing, um, you know, issues with that. Um, but again, I, I guess I could say, I don't know if it's understanding. I guess she tolerates me to an extent. 
Um, but because, tolerates, but y'all been together for 10 years. That's a lot of tolerating if that's the case. Yeah. 10 and, years? You know, so I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but, to, you know, to the point where I've, I've messed myself up. Like, literally, I don't want to go out anywhere. We don't go out. We don't do... That we don't do date nights and shit like that. My date nights would be I got a little Android box. I could watch the latest movies or whatever. So why know. not try to implement that? Again? Well, I I do, but, but it's you, mo- it's more so you know like it's not like you know what let's set Saturday aside uh-huh. to do something. We are gonna watch a movie, you know, do some popcorn or some some or whatever. Get out the house, you know, something to make her feel like you know you still want her. Mm. Just. <laughs> It's it's hard for me. Like again, I. But always, I feel like you have to push through that, though, Snap. Yeah. What makes it hard? That it's not resistance. It's just the the nonchalant way of living right now. It's just my my thought process is to where it's it's one of those things. Like I want to try. It's like you know I want to get out, but now I feel the anxiety when I'm doing it. It's like <laughs> wow. you know like yeah. like okay we're, we're in the process of purchasing a house. And it's like every day she sees something different. Every day it's like, bah, bah, bah. It's like, all right, let's go see this one. And I'm like, mm, all right, I'll go see these two with you today. But tomorrow I can't do nothing. I can't, you know, next week I can't do nothing. And But now I'm leaving it into her hands. So, so now she's going house visiting, the house visiting. And, and, you know, it's like one of those things. It's like I want to participate, but I don't know if it's, if it's anxiety or something like that or frustration. I don't know what it is, but it could be, you know, my personal things that I'm going through. I think that's what it is. It's just me mentally. I'm fighting something mentally. I'm going through, like, I don't, I don't know if it would be an early mid-life crisis or something like that. But there's always a point where you start saying to yourself, can I do better? Can I do more? And I don't think I'm doing as much. I think I should do more. But I don't know. I, but I think those are questions that we should constantly ask ourselves. About how are we evolving um, cause I, you know, I struggle with that, but I know I'm in a different place in my life where I just, I, I want good energy around me and I just don't have the energy or the mental beings to fight with anybody. I can't fight your insecurities. I can't fight your defense mechanisms. I can't fight against things that you, that have nothing to do with me and that you haven't made efforts to resolve. I just, I don't have the beans for it. Snap. But for me, things that I definitely do and everyone's different, I think, um, I definitely do a meditation podcast. I, I watch my spiritual service weekly. Sometimes I listen to frequency healing music. You weren't the person I spoke to about this, but there's frequency healing um, playlists on Spotify that my friend put me on to, so to help me sleep. Or sometimes I'll just drown my mind out by watching stuff like Living Single, Golden Girls, things that are just aren't destructive, right? Like if I know I'm in a, in a mood, I'd rather be by myself in the, the comfort of my own apartment and my place so I'm not spreading that energy because energy is only transferred. It's not created or destroyed. And so I don't want to be spreading that energy everywhere. But I think it's something for you to look into, Snap. Mm. I think it's something, self-care routine. Well, I, I do things, like some things. I'll get out into the park every now and then. And You're like, shoot. right, walking or I'll, doing something. I'll walk. I, we got like a three-mile trail around my little neighborhood. I'll, I'll run every now and then. I'll walk. But... At the end of the day, I'm just doing that to say, all right, so I'm not old and stiff later on in life. But it's not doing it to, to kind of release something from me. Like, yeah, music does that to me. Like, when I can get into a zone and just vibe out and just sing along with music and things like that, that's kind of what I do to kind of self here. Because music, I don't know, music heals a lot. The music can sometimes be better than medicine sometimes, you know? Because medicine gives you side effects. Music don't really give you side effects. It just gives you the, the answer you're looking for. Sometimes. No, I know. I just think, I think I'm very, I'm always wary about medicine. It's just a, it's a quick, it's like a Band-Aid solution. But, yeah. but I think, you know, finding healthy self-care routines for people to take care of themselves, their mental beings, it's just really, really important. So you're always on my mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're always on my mind because from some of the conversations that we've had about that. So I just want to at least make sure we, we spoke about it. I'm so. good. I'm good. I live. I live. But you know what? But okay. see, I, I almost feel like that's like a, a cop out. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm always going to be good. But, but you know how many people use that? I, oh, trust me. I know. So, yeah. I know. I mean, I'm good usually means there's something else going on. But you're good. Like, that's how you just going to kind of I'm, roll. I'm better than others. All right? I'm not that's doing fair. the best in life. But when I see You're other people's situations, yeah. I'm good. 
I'm good. Okay, respect. I could, I could dig it. I could dig it. Okay, snap. I'm testing you again. You're going to get this right. So how can they find you and us? Bet. I'm going to start with us first. Black and Nuance Pod on Spotify. Black and Nuance Pod on Apple Podcasts. Uh, excitementradio.com. And I'm on IG at R-O-B underscore O-Snap. O-S-N-A-P. And I'm on Twitter at R-O-B, capital O-S-N-A-P, Rob O-Snap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this was powered by Excitement Radio. You can find me on Twitter, Georgette, or Instagram, Georgette Star with two R's. Or my website, georgettepierre.com. <sighs> High five, Snap. High five. Let's. Thank you, Dr. Georgette. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be wanting to get it out. I know, I know, I know. And I'm going to get it out. We're going to get it out. This is therapy. This is therapy. Peace.